quantified self movement has made an incredible amount of data available for people to make better decisions about their personal health and fitness. The same transformational change is happening in marketing and Ryan Pitilak, CEO of performance advertising agency Unique Influence, is here to talk to you about it. Unique Influence is an MDC partners agency, which is a publicly traded group of agencies. Please join me in welcoming somebody a little different than what we usually talk about, Ryan Pitilak. Thank you. I'm on, I'm ready. Hello. Well, hi, everybody. I uh, hope everybody's having a fantastic day. Uh, you know, as Julie was talking about, the quantified self movement has really transformed the fitness tech industry. There's a lot of data that's available now that individual consumers can use to figure information about themselves that will make them help them make decisions around lifestyle, around fitness decisions. And that same kind of data, as Julie's mentioned, is now available in marketing. But the real question is, how would you use that? And you know, what's interesting is I look around the crowd today, I see a lot of different companies who have developed products, and the question for me is, which one of your products will actually be the one that becomes popular? And one, there's a big problem that exists in the industry right now, which is a lot of money is being spent on R&D, and you know, not enough is being spent on marketing. And you know, if you think about brands who have spent a lot on marketing, who have become household names, brands like Peloton, like Strava, like Luminosity, you know, they've all invested heavily in marketing. And this is what I want to talk to you about today, which is you know, how do you do that intelligently using the data that's available now to actually drive uh, customer acquisition for your products, your services, so that you can actually break through the noise and get to mass media. Mm -hmm. So if you think about the platforms that are sitting in your pocket today, your iPhones, your Samsung Galaxy, your Android devices, you know, these really have revolutionized the way that we all can get data into some place in a, in a kind of usable way. And this has allowed us also to have all these great devices that we all know about. And you know, the leader of the pack is the Apple Watch. Um, and I think that you know, that's interesting that Apple has created such a seamless experience that we can all tap into, either be creating another wearable device that uh, maybe is something that goes in your clothing uh, or something that goes in your ears, which should be a big trend that's coming up here. Uh, but in terms of like where we are as the awareness in our industry, fitness tech is at an all-time high. And the question for me for you is, so if awareness is at an all-time high, where is your brand in terms of that awareness? Have people actually adopted your brand? You know, we know that smartphones are pervasive, and you know, all of this has created an ecosystem where there's a large opportunity, um, and you know, this doesn't exist in very many industries, but you know, we're at a really nice time right now in fitness tech. So if you kind of think about what the growth is going to look like in specifically the wearable industry, over the next five years, we're gonna see 100% growth. And you know, there will be more growth in smartphones. I mean, there's still a lot of demand for smart, for not smart phones, smart watches. Um, there's still a lot of demand for smart watches. In particular, there's about a two to one desire to ownership ratio. So what that means is there's still a lot of people that are out there um, looking to buy one. But you know, as we start to think about what else is going to be interesting, uh, putting devices on clothing, you know, that's huge. I saw a lot of people doing that out there at the Expo Center. Uh, and earwear, that's something that has the potential to really be disruptive for fitness if uh, the technology could get you know, to where it needs to there. You know, it's easier than ever to find your potential customers online. So, you know, I think a lot of companies, like I said, they spend a lot of time figuring out their product, and they spend some time thinking about the customer. But the question that we help solve, and I just want to help you figure out how to solve this for yourselves today, is how do you find those people? 
And uh, typically in fitness, we break things up into several different segments. We think about the beginner segment because you know that's a fairly easy uh, group to think about. You know, it's the healthy mom uh, goes in that segment who likes to occasionally work out. Um, but the challenge with this segment is, you know, they may not be looking for what you guys are developing today, right? They're kind of just at the beginning of their journey, but they're, you know, they're interested. Their uh, interest is peaked. So their intent, their state, it's pretty passive, but you can reach them. And the reason why this is so important and the reason why I think about mass media, uh, as we mentioned earlier, is because these people really make up the bulk of who you want to target. You know, I think a lot of companies, the first thing they try to do is they go after that intermediate group. So in the intermediate group, think of people who uh, maybe do the Tough Mudder or do marathons frequently. But that audience is, is a lot smaller. And if you want to become a knockout success, you certainly are going to need to do more than that. Uh, we still think you should target them, and there's a lot of different ways of how to do that. You know, the elite athletes, there's just not that many of them. And, you know, the penetration to them happens through the coaches mostly. Um, you could kind of put trainers in that uh, category. But again, the size is very small. So the question is, like, how do you actually go big, right? Blow it out. A lot of companies I talked to uh, in the expo hall and said, yeah, we're having great success. You know, we do these conferences. We actually sell things here and it's working well. Uh, but nobody really knows about us outside of this savvy group, this early adopter group. And it's amazing because some of the things that I'm seeing is fantastic. And it's exactly the type of uh, product that should be out there in the mass media. So in terms of channels to reach these people, uh, you have Facebook and Instagram as being a really good channel for reaching those people that are beginner fitness people. Uh, and the intermediate side, still Facebook, Instagram's great. Google is a fantastic place when people are searching. Amazon, same thing when people are searching. And so I'm, I talked a lot about Facebook and I'll just kind of go down one little path. So Facebook and Instagram represent one out of every five minutes that you spend on your phone. So that's inclusive of talk time, everything. So that's pretty incredible. And if you actually think about all the data that they know about you, it's crazy because anything you like, anything that you write, anything, any website that you go to that has their pixel on it, which is pretty much all sites now, any site that you go to that has their SDK in it, any, sorry, mobile app that you go to that has their SDK in it probably has it. So they pretty much know everything you do. Uh, so, you know, whether or not you think that's creepy, I think it's awesome from a marketing standpoint. And you should too, because this is how we can so kind of carefully craft a campaign to go after exactly who you're trying to go after. So let's think about like how this actually happens. Now you have an audience, and this audience, uh, you've been selling your products for, let's call it six months. You've worked up a nice base of people. Uh, you know, maybe these have been people who have purchased your product through retail, but you know, some of those people, they're gonna come to your website, they're gonna have customer service issues, they're probably gonna put in their email address. So, you know, assuming you have some connection at all with the people who are buying your product, then you have a really nice base list of people to then figure out who are these people and how do I find more of them? And expand that marketing out further so that you can actually um, really, like I said, blow it out. The way that we think about it is we take your core audience, these emails you've collected, these phone numbers, addresses, whatever, it could be from people that have ordered, could be from customer service, whatever, pre-order interest. That information gets loaded into a couple different systems. The easiest way to do that, the way that if you're doing it on yourself, you can just put it into Facebook. There's this little thing called Audience Insights, it's pretty easy. Um, you know, you have to think about how to really analyze the data, but what comes out of this, and we use some additional tools as well, uh, is a really rich profile of all of those people that are in your target or in your current customer base. And we segment them into different groups, right? So if we think about, you know, what the big clusters are, you know, in this case we have beginner, intermediate, elite, it could be anything you want, really. You know, we can think about clusters that might be more resonant to your specific business. But in this case, I was thinking, okay, let's kind of go with what, you know, we typically do right out of the gate, and this is our standard approach. 
Uh, and then we go in and we find like, all right, there are actually quite a few moms in here. Like I'm not quite sure how they came across us exactly. And maybe we can go dig into that, find out where they came from, which is always an interesting exercise. Uh, but that's emerging. Um, we're finding people who like to walk their dogs. You know, it's just kind of a high affinity for that. Like you would have no idea when you're selling them these products that, oh wow, these people have a high affinity for walking dogs. So as we gather all of these interests and cluster them into groups, we now can think about who are we going to target. We'll do the same thing in intermediate, the Tough Mudder people, maybe the CrossFit people, uh, and certainly could do the same thing with Elite going after the personal trainers. All of these little targetable groups, we can develop using what's called lookalike technology, which is really awesome. Uh, if, you, if you think about it, like let's say everybody in this room is a sample population, and we want to find another 100 people that look just like you. Uh, Facebook knows so much about us that given enough data, it can do a pretty darn good job of finding that next group, um, and that's the lookalike technology. And in addition to that, we can find all these uh, targets, and they're called psychographic targets, which pretty much means things you're interested in, things you're talking about. We can target that way or target with demographics. Um, with Google, it's people searching for things. So. How does this actually play out? And those, if you didn't know, that was your little people going into different clusters. Wasn't it nice? Um, so this is, this is an example of how we did this. Uh, so Beachbody's a client of ours. If you think about P90X, Insanity, like who here has heard of these guys? P90X, Insanity, hopefully more than one person, right? Um, one of the largest fitness companies in the world. They had a kind of really serious marketing dilemma, which is people stopped buying DVDs. So how do they still become a, and be a viable business? Um, they've made a really smart choice to move over to this uh, subscription service, this on-demand, Beachbody on-demand subscription service and get access to all their workout videos. And uh, we help them with the marketing of that. And the reason why I kind of, I, I point this out is because you know, this is a transformational change that this brand was going through. And they had to find a way to reach people that would be interested in their product. And they had, you know, this great baseline of products. But what I can tell you is it's not as straightforward as, you know, going out there and identifying like an audience here or there that might work. So this is an example of a new product that they released last year. Um, it's called Country Heat. I don't know if you guys have seen it. It's like some, you know, kind of like line dancing and like different kind of steps to uh, working out. But it went crazy <laughs> and uh, people loved it. So we initially started by testing 40 different audiences. And this is all in one month. We tested 40 different audiences. So think about that. Like we have all these different little sectors that we've developed and we have 40 of them. And we tested 39 different creative, and you know, some of those creative made it to different audiences. And we measure the sales and we optimize and that whole thing. So this is the kind of the, the framework for how you can use that data that I was talking about, that same data that if you're sitting over here trying to quantify yourself and make decisions about it, that same data exists in marketing today. And you know, we just want to be smarter about using it, and it's available to you to use on your own too. Just you know, create a marketing campaign. The uh, value of what we saw was great. I mean, we, we, we went out of the door with uh, a lot of success, uh, 1.5 million video views, but really trying to drive sales, right? So we're a performance company, and sales uh, went really through the roof. It was pretty phenomenal, and uh, saw a 200% growth within three weeks in terms of the scale of the campaign. So this is the type of success you can have if you just approach it from that perspective, right? It's like these are new to the market. New, you have to create demand for these products, right? Nobody's out there saying, oh, I want country heat, right? You have to tell people about it and then bring them in. But all do it cost effectively. So as I kind of move forward, this is something that we'll kind of walk through it a little bit.
Thanks. So yeah, I mean, I'll leave with one quick thought, which is we help innovative and aspiring companies shape culture and help people live more inspiring lives. That's what our mission is, and I feel like that is very consistent with the mission of the people who are creating products here in this room today. We're all trying to make everybody's life better. Um, That's why we're passionate about the space, and uh, I hope that we can all do that together. And I'll say one last thing. Um, the platform that I talked about earlier, the thing that makes this all possible, uh, the one that I feel like has the most potential is the iPhone X as kind of leading the future for this. Uh, so we're going to give one of those away today. So Chantal, Lachey, Caitlin, could you guys raise your hand? Yeah, so she's one back there, one over there, and then one right there. So if you want to give them a business card, you can do that, and then we'll uh, let you know who won. Thanks.